Hey everybody, this is uh, Yads Alex, and today I'll be showing you how to virtualize Ubuntu 10.04 on a Windows 7 computer. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your internet browser, and you're going to want to go to virtualbox.org. I'll have a link in the description. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to go over here to downloads, and you're going to download the correct download for your machine. And once you have that downloaded, you simply follow the installation instructions of Simple Wizard, and then you'll have that installed. The next website you're going to want to go to then is ubuntu.com. And then you'll go over here to download. And then you're going to pick 32-bit uh, or 64-bit. I'd recommend the 32-bit. And then you're going to hit start download. That can take a little while depending on your internet connection. So once that's downloaded, I recommend dragging that download to the desktop so you can follow along with me a little easier. And then from here, we're going to open up VirtualBox. All right. For now, I will. You will. You won't have these, but you are, will have this stuff up here. And then you're going to hit New. You're going to a new wizard will pop up, and you're going to hit Next. And you're going to name this virtual machine whatever you want. I'm going to say Ubuntu test, or no, uh, we'll just name it 5, just a random number, you guys don't need a number, but I've done this before. You go next, and now you get to choose how much memory you want it to be able to use. I'm going to bump mine up to um, 1 gig, and this is how much you want to let it use is based on your system. So, yeah. Next and then create new hard disk is what I'd recommend a new wizard will pop up and then you'll have the choice of dynamic or fixed I'd recommend dynamic because then it only uses as much space as it needs at that time and so then we'll go to next but now you still have to set a limit for it so for this demonstration I'm only going to make it I'll just stick with 8 gigs and um, you can move it up or down depending if you want it to use more or less space but this is just a cap. It won't actually use this much space when you first install it. And then you're going to hit next. You can check that real quick. And then you hit finish. And you're going to go over here and hit finish. And now this will pop up. From here, you're going to want to hit start. And then this little wizard will pop up. You're going to hit next. And then from here, you're going to hit this little button on the side. And you're going to go to add. And you're going to go to desktop you are going to find the ISO the Ubuntu 10.04 ISO and then you're going to hit open I've already opened it so can't open it again and then it'll show up right here you're going to then pick select and then you're going to hit next you're going to hit finish and then this will go on uh, just a little warning nothing to worry about So now it's loading up for the first time in this virtual machine. So now we're at this screen. Um, I recommend you can choose to only try it out, but if you want, or I mean, I'd recommend installing it. I mean, you've already created the virtual machine, and you can always change the language if you want. Now you get to choose uh, your time zone. This is the right time zone for me. So forward. And then you get to choose your keyboard. For most of you, this keyboard default will probably be fine. You can type in something uh, right there if you want to test it out. And then you're going to go to forward. And then um, just double check the, 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 that this is the size that you had picked. And that says virtual, bar, virtual box hard disk. Can't talk. And then you're going to fill out this information. Alex, Alex, um, Alex is fine. I'm just going to make a simple password oh. just to, uh, just because I won't really need a password. And then I'm going to name this and then I'm going to log me in automatically because 
I don't need to log in and out of it. Then you're gonna hit next. Oh, looks like I can't use capitals, my mistake. And then install. And I will be back when this is done. Alright, I'm back now that this is finished installing. And you're gonna hit restart now. So it'll do its thing. So when this pops up, you're going to go right to this little disk button here. You're going to right click on it, and you're going to uncheck that disk. All you do is left click on it. And then you're going to come back in here, and you're going to hit enter. Now it'll uh, finish rebooting. Now I'm going to pause it, and I will be back again when it has started up. Alright, so now that it has started up, you're going to go up to this corner, you're going to hit Accessories, and you're going to go down to Terminal. And you are then going to type in sudo space app space er, slash dot dash git, and then update. If you can't read that, I'll have it spelled out in the uh, underbar. You're going to hit Enter. It's going to ask you for a password. You are going to type in that password you used earlier when installing the system and you're going to hit enter and then that'll do its thing and then you're going to type in sudo same beginning and then you're going to type in upgrade and then y and then enter and then it'll do its thing it'll only take a couple seconds Yours may take longer depending on your computer speed and internet speed and how much memory of allowed this virtual system to have. This is taking longer than I thought. I will be back when this is finished. Alright, so now that this is finished, you're going to type in sudo sudo apt git space install dkms you're going to hit enter and you hit y and enter and then I'm going to pause it again and I will be back when this is done oh never mind it finished faster than I thought uh, you can go ahead and exit out of this and you can go up to this which little thing should be red now and you're going to go ahead and hit restart. You can hit restart and then it'll restart. <laughs> it'll do what it says. This should only take a couple seconds. Seems to you know, she start up pretty quick. Alright, now that it has restarted, we are going to go to machine. Actually, I'm sorry, devices, and you're going to go oh, oh, to install guest add on additions. And then, if nothing sh oh, nothing shows up on your desktop, you're going to go over here to places. You're going to go to V, you're going to click on this. And then, if this auto pops up, just hit um, cancel and then exit out of this. We'll be, and then from here, you're going to double click on or er, uh, open this and you are going to go to here and you're going to open and then you're going to hit run you're going to type in the password you have been using and it'll do its thing I'm going to pause it and I'll be back when this is done again alright so now it has um, finished says done right there you're going to hit enter and then that'll close out from here you're going to we'll go ahead and actually shut down for now once that is shut down you're gonna come over back to this screen 
a little laggy, that's weird. And you're going to go to, you're going to click on it, and you're going to go to settings. Um, nothing in here to change. Nope. You're going to go down to system. Um, and you can enable these things if you want. Um, but Or you can just kind of leave them the way they are, it's depending on what you need. Um, you can go over to processors. If you have a multi-core processing in your host computer, you could um, bump it up. Um, or you could just leave it where it is. You could go all the way up to a couple, or you could just stay at one. Um, that should be fine. And then display. So your video card has a certain amount of available megabytes if you want to let it use more you can let it use more or you can keep it at where it's at um, you, if you're thinking that you might play games on the virtual machine or some sort of similar thing you can go ahead and enable 3D acceleration um, I'm just gonna leave this unable because this is for my just for this recording when you started it up you should have hear, heard the startup noises if you haven't been hearing that you could go you could try sound blaster 16 and if you've been hearing noise just leave it where it is networking is usually done by itself and then you can go to USB and leave that, that should all be fine hit OK and then you're going to go ahead and start it back up This will take a couple seconds, but uh, shouldn't take too long. That noise right there that tells you that the sound drivers and everything are working. And the mouse integration should have already been working. Um, and if you want to test to see if the add-ons we installed earlier working you can just go down to this corner and move it and as it moves it should auto reset the screen to the window size as it's doing and if you want to check you know the internet's working you can just go up to Firefox right here We're on Google so you already know it's working but I'll Google something just to show that it's working it's working. Everything looks pretty good. Um, so, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe. And if you um, would like any other videos about computers, Xboxes, PS3s, electronics, something, anything, leave a comment and I might make a video about it. Thanks for watching. Bye.